Ready? Ready? I was born ready. Anywhere. That's actually kind of what we're going to talk about today. Being you. <laughs> Welcome to Fish on Fridays. By the time you're watching this, it will be the first Friday of Lent. Currently, it's Ash Wednesday. Can you tell? See? Well, I'm dirty. Yeah. You could describe my facial complexion as ashen. <laughs> Lent is a time... Uh, where we kind of reconcile with the Lord, we remind ourselves, are, are reminded of our humanness, that's why we wear the ashes, um, that we are broken people who need love and to be reconciled with God who provides that love. Ultimately, it'll lead us to be authentic, which is going to be what we talk about today, being authentic, being true to who we were made to be. Ephesians 4 verses 22 through 24 highlights what authenticity may look like. I'm gonna read it. Put off the old man that belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new man created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. You don't wanna be old, do you? You want to be new. That's right. You don't want to be a sinful pile of garbage. Wow. Do you? Good, I just keep asking, do you? You want to be new, <laughs> clean, <laughs> fresh, like a newborn babe. Don't you? Wow. Next. So who are some authentic people you could think about? Uh, I think about Mother Teresa. That took you too long. <laughs> <laughs> Who are some authentic people? There are a lot of people who are at least authentic in that they're very memorable because they were themselves. Michael Scott, Niels Fave, um, Mother Teresa. Don't put Michael Scott and Mother Teresa in the same mm -hmm. sentence. If we really believe that we each were made for a purpose, then that means we all have to be unique, be authentic. So some ways to do that would be like recognizing, you know, what are our individual qualities and talents and interests and how would we apply that to the world that needs those things. So at the start of Lent, we are kind of like a canned version of a good iced latte. Why do I say that? Because in a canned version, a canned version of a lot of things, I'm talking about like a gas station version of the latte. It has all these additives and things to try to preserve it. A lot of things on top of the very basic things that you need in a latte. In a latte you need espresso and steamed milk. That's pretty much all you need to make a latte. Uh, but when you can it, you add all these things to make it stay fresh, but it's not really staying fresh. It can just be really hard to be authentic when the world is so constantly shoving ideas of who we have to be in our face. It's constantly telling us what we need to buy and what we need to look like and who we need to hang out with. So it can be really difficult to, to shed that and really try and be who we are, to not identify so much with the world and, and what's around us, to just try and live for God. What Lent helps us to do is get back to just the very basics of who we are and our relationship with God. So we get back to prayer and fasting and almsgiving so that we can really be in a clear relationship with God and with the people around us. Because a latte made by a barista is a lot better and we're a lot better when we're our true selves. That's why we have 40 days of Lent to give us time to, to break free from that old self and to turn into the new self in time for Easter. It's a time of total renewal for us where we don't have to listen to the voices 
of the world, but we can really try and hone in on where Jesus is calling us in our lives. But that's how I will feel, hopefully, by Easter. More fulfilled, more me, more happy. And hopefully then we can carry it on Yeah. for the rest of our lives. Yeah. This has been Fish on Fridays. Be real, be yourself. Be the you that God created you to be. And high five. Enjoy some good fish sticks or something.